Hey guys, and welcome to League Inspections. Today we are focused on Diana, Scorn of the Moon. She likes the moon, curved objects, and amazing jokes. A man, a woman, and a yordle walk into the sun. They die. Because it burns them alive. <laughs> she dislikes not the moon, the sun, and never quite being able to figure out how a straight attack works. Crescent strike, that's how it should work, right? Mm. So let's begin. So our first clip is a... not a great moment, of course. We've got Rengar coming up here. You can see him. He's just running up the lane. He's coming to gank. Good times. And he is waiting quietly in the bushes. He is pinged for my notice. I completely ignored it because... Man, I'm farming here. By the time I realize he's come in, it's a little bit late. And the moon pull, whatever it's called, fails. Now the reason I bring that up is just a very simple reason, because noticing that ping should have meant I was a little bit closer in, perhaps I should have been further into the bush, maybe around here, so that way I could have uh, intercepted Teemo a lot better. Admittedly, he burnt a flash, that's good news. However, we also burnt a flash because I was trying to get him with the, uh, what is it called, moonfall. I don't know why it's called moonfall. Anyway. That's just a failed gank. It happens. So, here we are. Rengar is in the bushes again. He has blown up two mushrooms, but that's fine. They probably assume he's left by now. But guess what? Rengar has not left. And he jumps for the Lulu. We go for different targets. The moonfall fails. And we push. And I've got no way of getting out. I've gone on too far. And the retreat's just not going to happen. That's just a standard. Be aware that you need to escape after the gank can fail. Could we have beaten them? Maybe. Maybe we could have. Uh, oh, my abilities up, really? Uh, if all my abilities were up, maybe it's just saying that because I died. Even so, be less aggressive. Uh, maybe even go for the same target. That could have been good. Get the moon fall. A lot of things that could have gone differently in that fight. Alright, still in top lane. That's what a top laner does, they hang around in top lane. But this time we have a new challenger. It is LeBlanc. The friend of everyone. She is all the way from mid lane. I don't remember if I knew she was there. But, in comes Rengar. For some reason he hasn't given up on me yet. I guess we're okay. And they're all kinda weak. Except for, of course, Lulu. Rengar comes in, ults, and beats the crap out of LeBlanc. Good. And Teemo goes down next. I am at below half health. And this Lulu was going to die. I've decided it. Yep, there's no way she's going to survive this. No way at all. Oh, right. Remember that thing I was saying about don't go into towers when you're at low health? Apparently I didn't learn that lesson. But hopefully now that I've seen this for the second time, I have learned my lesson. Because that Lulu was quite okay. And she probably was going to get away. And there she goes. Escaped. Okay, still on top lane, because that's what a good top laner does at some point, leaves, but not yet. And Teemo approaches. I'm not concerned about Teemo. I run into a bunch of mushrooms, they now have vision on me, and I go back into Teemo who beat me in the first fight. This time, Teemo brings friends. So, the real question there is, why do you go back into a fight after you've they've got vision on you, and it was a character you couldn't beat in the first place. Teemo should notice that his mushrooms are being destroyed, or at least get vision for a brief time after that. And the rest of the team, when they're missing an action, you know, all the lanes are pushed. You've really got to assume that maybe you're walking to another trap. You've always got to be aware of the potential of players when you can't see them. They really could be anywhere. Okay, maybe not anywhere, but they could just definitely be in a much more dangerous place than you're really wanting them to be. It's the funny thing about this game. People keep trying to kill you. Hmm. Now, I preface this next fight with a little bit of information about LeBlanc. LeBlanc hits hard. She does. She does very uh, single target burst. She can do a lot of damage. I mean, we're looking at just at a glance, easily a thousand damage plus the ignite. Bad times. And so... You've always got to be aware of that with LeBlanc, and whenever LeBlanc's in the game, I always just like to have a little bit more magic resist than I usually would. Uh, in this case, I've built the uh, Negatron Cloak. 
and LeBlanc is seen by this ward that was handily placed down. Now, LeBlanc dies easily. That's not a problem because Karzix is there. Thanks, Karzix. You did good. And no one really got hurt all that much. But LeBlanc also has the ability to silence, and we will be returning to this uh, in the next couple of clips. But LeBlanc is dangerous. That's all you need to know for now. Now, after a successful push and you've lost a player, the best idea is to run. However, you get into what I call the death train, where people just keep getting pulled back and they keep getting chased, and it's just bad for anyone who gets left behind, as anyone who's been left behind by a train would know. Now, one thing you've got to be careful of with the death train, and I'm just going to go back for this one. Now, Blitzcrank here is in trouble. That's fine. So don't go back to help him. Just let him, let him die. And don't try to pull them towards you, because that just makes the train move faster. And no one wants a faster moving train coming at them. I mean, the CC is bad enough. Once the train has reached its destination, in this case a tower, then feel free to turn around, because then you're not going to be chased down the entire lane. But you've got to be careful that you don't pull the train close to you, because that just can doom anyone else who's trying to escape from this train. Just a bit of a lesson there, I suppose. This here highlights one of the things I like about Diana. It's a 5v2 at the tower. It's not a good situation. Diana does have a bit of gold on her by her name, or on her name. Whatever, she's got money. And, well, let's crank. Let's crank Mrs. Paul sometimes. It's cool. I know the guy. It's fine. Israel comes in. I miss my moonfall. But, you know what? I don't like Israel living. Israel living is a bad thing. And so you get the Crescent Strike, go for the Leap In to finish him. The Leap In immediately refreshes, but it doesn't because I guess I didn't hit him with the Crescent Strike. Oh well, ignore what I just said. Now, in the back is what I want to point out here. Their back line is being hurt a lot by Rengar there, and Rengar is also a cat now. So now Nunu is in the front line, he's taken a lot of tower damage, of course each tower shot does uh, more damage than the previous one, and he's kind of in a bad place, he kind of can't get out and his team can't really support him after that last fight. So he dies. So it's nice to see I'm not the only one making horrible tower mistakes this time. But you've got to remember that your team, as it weakens, is less likely to want to come in and help you because frankly they can't afford to die either. If, the team, if Rengar had not come in earlier and uh, done a bulk of damage to them, would I have survived? No, probably not. I probably would have uh, died fairly quickly. And the tower probably would have been gone next as well. So, you know, good job, Rengar. Even that your sacrifice is, uh, is worth it. I got a kill on Nunu. It's always good to get a kill on support. <laughs> Jungle for support, worth it, right? Now, I was speaking about LeBlanc earlier. As I said, she's got an amazing amount of burst damage. And guess who's there? Oh yes, it's LeBlanc. I think I could probably kill her. She's weak, although I'm also weak. And look at that amazing Crescent Strike. It misses and she flashes over it. It's the brilliant Crescent Strike. She takes a lot of damage, but quite frankly, her burst is just too strong. Now, if I'd hit with that Crescent Strike, would she have died? Yeah, probably. Actually... Uh, where am I? That's me. Yeah, she would have died if that Crescent Strike had hit. But she flashed over, which... You know what? Good work, LeBlanc. I like that. It was some skillful play there. But... Fighting LeBlanc when you're low health is just asking to die, unless you can do something really sneaky very quickly. Okay, so we're all down here, just farming up their jungle, just trying to get any opportune attacks. It's all going well. When we realize that... Hang on a second, there's five of them here. This is kind of bad, so we need to back off. Now we could try to fight them, it'd be a 3v5 at this point. Not a good fight, so you just leave it. Don't try to fight any fights you can't take. And so we leave, quite happily. And we all just hide in this bush. Is it watered? Maybe. It could be. We don't know. But now, the situation's turned. It's a 5v4. They're a lot lower health. This is looking good now. So Fiddlesticks decides to go in, we get a pull, 
Kazix jumps over there. And Fiddlesticks ult comes down. Also, Nunu tries to do some stuff. The entire team is just... It's just become a really good team fight here. Rengar's coming around to uh, flank them there. <laughs> that Fiddlesticks ult was actually really good. And they just collapse fairly quickly. I love Lulu's hat. <laughs> Pointing out Lulu's hat is important. So really the whole point of that is, don't fight a fight that you don't know if you can win or not. Wait until you regroup, wait until you're ready for the next fight. It's fairly standard. All information is not particular Diana, of course, but it's always good to point that fact out that you want to be in a fight you can win. No one ever wants to be in a fight where you just don't know what could happen. Whoa, what was that? Hang on a second. Let's just go into all for a moment. Okay, so not a Diana tip, more of a little, more of a little Yordle Teemo trick. Mushrooms do damage over time; they don't do any burst damage. Putting all your mushrooms together in one place doesn't really help all that much. Sure, it gives them more likeliness that they're going to stand on a mushroom, but each mushroom doesn't stack; it just refreshes the but uh, the buff. So the mushrooms that Rengar just ran through. Probably one and a bit mushrooms is all that did. For the use of your cooldown, probably not the best idea. Not a Diana tip, not, you know, meaning to uh, disgrace Teemo in any way. He's fine, Teemo, he does a good job, but split up your mushrooms a little bit. They don't help in any way doing that. Anyway. So at this point, we haven't seen the enemy team in a while, and I go, ah, are they doing Baron? Maybe. There's a couple of Yordles around. And not seeing the team in a while and checking Baron, probably not the best way to do it. In fact, that's the exact way you shouldn't check Baron. A far better place for me to go just to check Baron would be to ward, say, in here. It's where Purple Team usually puts a ward in if they don't want to go into the uh, river just because of the danger. And that ward is... It's mostly useless. Not completely useless, but mostly useless. But that's where a ward is. Also, giving them that kill at that point when they're all around Baron gives them a really good incentive to go and get Baron, because now they're going to be doing 5v4 at the... You know, at best case scenario, it's going to be a 5v4, or worst case scenario, depending on who you are. And I just want to finish this off with sort of a silly uh, moment. And so, just getting the inhibitor, nothing unusual about that. And in come some minions. Well, we can't stand that, can we? So, let's throw the crescent out. Minions. We can't hurt them. We just want to make them scared, right? It's the best strategy. I need to work on the crescent strike, clearly. That's a good lesson to learn. Work on crescent strike. So anyway guys, this has been uh, the Diana video. Uh, if you've seen anything that I may have missed or have got any tips or tricks or anything like that with Diana, hey, let me know. I mean, you know, we're all learning off each other here. Anyway, until next time, keep inspecting those replays, examine why your cause of death, and I'll see you next time.